Hello, everybody. Hello, come on in. Y'all get situated. Happy Wednesday. Y'all were streaming on Wednesday this week because tomorrow we come home <laughs> from camping. Hello, everybody. Today is Wednesday the 21st, y'all. Today's a special day. It's my Nana's birthday. She's been in heaven for a couple years now, but I always say happy birthday to my Nana up in heaven. Hello, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Today, I have a really fun mug rug idea for you today, okay? Now, there is two links in the description box. Y'all, the first link is for the heart mug rug that we're making today. That's a free pattern. But I also did a bundle, and I'll show you what all is in the bundle. If you're interested in that, I'm going to show you that. But make sure to grab at least the free pattern, okay? That's going to walk you through the instructions and everything. That's what we're doing today. Y'all, what's really cool about this mug rug is we're making half rectangle triangles. It's really hard not to say half square triangles. <laughs> These are half rectangle triangles. And the really cool thing about this is with one solid piece of fabric and six strips of fabric, we're going to make two mug rug tops at the same time. And I'm going to show you how, so stay tuned. Oh, Beverly. Oh, maybe they're celebrating their birthdays together. Maybe. Happy birthday. Hello, everybody. Y'all come on in and get situated. Come on in. Get situated. Uh, so the chat topic for today, if you want to play along, I'm still reading and writing down notes from everybody's ideas from last week. Uh, what is one of your biggest pet peeves? We might have done this chat topic during the live every day for like 53 days during the beginning of the quarantine. We might have covered this chat topic. I can't remember now. What is one of your biggest pet peeves? Just answering mine really quick. Uh, one of my biggest pet peeves is walking around barefoot. And stuff sticking to the bottom of my feet. <laughs> That's one of my, I can't stand it. It drives me nuts. Hello, Miss Ellie. Thank you so much for moderating today. And I have not forgotten about you. If you want to meet with me after the live, send me a little uh, message on Facebook. And we'll get together. We're supposed to have really strong thunderstorms roll through this afternoon. I've seen that, that a lot of you have snow, which is crazy to me. It is so crazy. Here in Virginia, I'm on the east coast of Virginia in the Williamsburg area. It is going to be sunny and in the 70s today. So that's just crazy that some of y'all are getting snow. A lot of you are getting snow. Y'all, I have not watched the news in 21 days. Not even the weather report. I just get the weather report on the app on my phone, which, to be really honest, I've almost deleted because it's almost never right. Hello, Miss Kayla. I love you so much. Thanks for hanging out with Auntie today. But uh, it says we're supposed to have strong thunderstorms this afternoon. I've seen y'all snow pictures over on the creative crew. If this is one of your first times joining me, uh, and you're on Facebook and you haven't joined the creative crew. We're an awesome family over there. Not just quilting. I mean, predominantly it's quilting stuff, but we have crocheters and knitters and painters and woodworkers, basket makers. Uh, wow. We have all kinds of creatives over there and we would love to see your stuff. Ooh, Cindy, you lived in Virginia Beach. And in Norfolk. That's not far from me. 45 minutes. I'm near Bush Gardens. Okay, so I feel really chatty today. Uh, I wanted to show you something really fun I did this morning before we get started. <laughs> this morning I left the campground really early and I came home because I've had this idea for a couple of days, right? And I just haven't had time to do it. But look at what I did with my sublimation printers. Y'all, I'm having so much fun with sublimation. 
I just can't stand it. <laughs> it is so much fun. Okay, so uh, let's take a look at this. I made some face mask, right? Y'all might recognize this. I just, this morning, I went over to the pile of blocks that I have not put together from my happy at home, everyday quilt tutorial live streaming series, right? This is one of the blocks we made during that time. And I don't remember, is that rail fence? I can't remember the name of it, but I put it on my scanner and I scanned it and then I made this lovely face mask from it. Isn't that awesome? Isn't that awesome? I'm gonna show you what it looks like. Y'all, I'm not a fan of wearing the face mask, but I will say out of all the different face masks I've tried, I don't mind so much these uh, PPE washable face masks and uh, because they're pretty thin and I can breathe through them pretty quickly. I still, I still don't linger in the stores. I'm in and out because, you know, I just have a hard time wearing the face mask. But this one is probably the most comfortable. But now, you know, it's so pretty too. Watch this. Isn't that so pretty? Oh my goodness. I even lined it up perfectly. Isn't that cool? Yes. So that's my new face mask. And then, all right. So, you know, if you've watched... <laughs> An array of my different videos here on YouTube you know that I like printing with my jelly plate right so these are some of the prints that I've done before with my jelly plate and I just stack them in a stack because I'm never quite sure what to do with them one day I'll figure out something really cool to make out of this so I was like well what if I made a collage on my scanner with some of these pretty uh, jelly plate prints right look how pretty that is so that's what I did I just did like a patchwork of different uh different prints on my scanner and I made this lovely face mask y'all I've had so much fun this morning whoa <laughs> isn't that so cool look at that I love it. I still don't like wearing it. <laughs> but maybe I won't mind so much, right? Because they're so pretty. All right. So I just had to share that with you because that's what I've been doing this morning. What have you been doing this morning? Let me put that off to the side. Valera. Valeria, yes. Well, I didn't make the mask, right? I bought the mask. Let me show you. Three of these came in a package, right? They're the PPE washable face mask. 93.8% uh, polyester and then like 6.2% spandex. Uh, but I bought them for sublimation. So I didn't actually make the face mask itself, but I made the quilt block and I made the jelly prints that I used to decorate the face mask. Sally, I got them on Amazon. I can send you a link if you want. Not right at this precise moment, <laughs> but after the live. Jamie says, I'm being lazy this morning. Jeannie, I think we all need those kinds of mornings. Linda's making string blocks. Wanda says she's making tulip blocks and peach, pink, and corals. Wanda, have you shared pictures of that? Sand of the sun. Yeah, uh, sometimes I do use those in my junk journals. But uh, these, I feel like I want to do some kind of collage on a canvas or something with them. All right, let me write down the links. Let me write down so I don't forget. Link to the face mask.
So three come in a package. And you, you know what? I got like 12 of them for, it was under $13, if I remember right. So you get 12 face masks for like $13. I could be wrong about that, but it's in that ballpark price range. And then you could sublimate on them or paint them or dye them, whatever you want to do. Uh, but yes, what I'll do after the uh, live is done and we finish up, I'll go get the link and I'll put it in the comment section and I'll pin it to the top. So when you come to the comments, it'll be at the very top of the comments. Gail, I have a couple of videos on jelly plate printing, some on paper and some on fabric. So in the search bar on YouTube, type in Lisa Cape and Quilts Jelly Plate and see. I should have a couple videos that pop up, but let me just tell you. There is no shortage of amazing creators here on YouTube showing the jelly plate and different techniques far better than I do. It's just one of those things I enjoy doing. My results, sometimes they come out and sometimes they don't. <laughs> I think Valeria asked if I would make a tutorial on how to sublimate. Let me write that down. Because next week I might have some free time to do that, Valeria. It's a lot of fun if you have a printer set up for sublimation. Uh, oh. The ideas are endless. It's so much fun. All right. Now let's focus on this fun mug rug. Okay, so half rectangle triangles. Oh, hold on. Before I move on, I just want to let you know, Patreon Zoom is Saturday. Y'all don't forget, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I'll put a link to that Zoom on the Patreon page. And gather the stuff that you have bought that you never use for your show and tell. Just something, you know, it'll be a fun show and tell topic. Next week, uh, we're going live on Thursday, our normal day, 12 noon Eastern Standard Time. We're going to be making a quilt block to go up on the wall. Y'all see the tulip one and the rocky road block up on my design wall. I'm going to be making another one. I don't know which one I'm making yet. I have no idea. But that's what we're doing next week. And then sometime next week, I'm releasing, it's a pre-recorded video for another mug rug idea that is super cute. I can't wait for you to see it. And uh, yeah, it'll give you plenty of time to make them for Mother's Day or to make some and sell for Mother's Day. Those of you who craft and you sell your projects, really cute, pretty simple mug rug. Next week, some keep an eye out for that video. <laughs> Half rectangle triangles. That's what this mug rug is. So uh, this free pattern, you get the heart design, right? The bundle comes with this like country looking star. Isn't that cute? And it comes with a tracing template and an SVG, so you can cut it out with your cutting machines. You get the faith over fear thing, and that's also an SVG or a tracing template. And then uh, bless this home. Isn't that cute? I messed up the H. I messed up the vinyl a little bit right there, but it's still really cute. I love the colors, right? So that's the bundle. This one is the free one. Sherry, thank you so much for helping moderate. Sheila says, is there a reason you are wearing a safety pin? Nope. <laughs> Besides, I forgot to take it off my shirt. Many times if you see me, I, I, I usually remember to take it off before the live. Usually, if you see me, uh, I either have straight pins, like, you know, the little pins we based, you know, 
pin stuff together. I have those in my shirt a lot of the times. Or a safety pin. You never know when you're going to need one. I just forgot to take it off. It's usually there, though. <laughs> Not in the lives. I usually take it off. Okay, so let's go over the things that you need to make this mug rug. Here's what's really cool, y'all. I'm going to show you what you need for the top. You need six strips that are an inch and a half wide. So they're thin little strips, right? Inch and a half wide by 10 inches long. So I got my little strips here. Just arrange them however it looks pretty to you. Let's see. We'll make it uniform and do this like that for this one. Six strips, one and a half inches wide, 10 inches long. See that? Oh, one of them's off the camera. <laughs> And then you need a solid fabric. And this is, let's see, 10 inches wide like this and six and a half inches tall like that. Just this right here is going to make two mug rug tops. Just these things, two mug rug tops. So that's why I say, especially if you're, if you need to knock out a bunch of gifts, if you want to add a bunch of stuff to your craft booth or even your Etsy shop, uh, these make up really quick because you're making two at one time. Oh, Santa the Sun said her grandma always had a pin on her shirt. She said, you never know when you need it. Exactly. Yes. Oh, Sherry does it too. Okay, so I'm not alone. Okay, so to get started with this mug rug, y'all, we're just going to be doing some stitching, okay? I want you to set your seam allowance. I can move that out of the way. Set your seam allowance to a quarter inch seam allowance. There's my pieces. I'm going to switch the camera over. And y'all, okay, so we're all different. I'm just going to stitch all of this together without pressing. And I'm going to press at the very end. You might want to sew two strips together and press it. Sew two strips together and press it and so on. I'm just going to sew them all into one piece and then press my seams once I'm done. Okay, so let me switch you over. Uh, let's do this. There we go. All right, I'm going to grab my first two strips of fabric, just right here. We're putting pretty sides together, and we're going to make sure they're lined up nice and straight. One on top of the other. And we're sewing right down that raw edge. These smaller strips, you have to kind of show them who's boss <laughs> and hold them in place. So, you know, I have an easier time with like two and a half inch strips. These are a little bit skinnier. Trying to stay as straight as possible. There's my first set. <clears throat> I'm going to grab my next two. Y'all, this pollen is killing me. I apologize for my voice. <laughs> oh. <clears throat> Everything is still yellow. Not, it's not as bad today as it has been, but it's still, it's still bad.
we're just checking as we're going that they're still lined up, right? There's my second set, and then I have this last set of two pretty sides together and match those seams up. Match them up, Lisa. All right, so that's three groups of two. I'm going to cut them apart now. Like that. Now I'm going to pair up some of these groups. So let's open it up and see what we have. We have white and blue. Well, I say white and blue. It's more like beige. So there's two of my groups, right? I'm going to turn this over and match up that raw edge. We're going to sew this one. Now you can pin that if it's easier for you. I just get it started and then match up this seam all the way down, right? Hold it in place with my fingers. Sew a little bit and then match up the rest. Now we can take that off. and add this last piece in there, right? So we have this one, the last piece, and we want that to go right there. So I'm gonna flip that over and then turn it this way because I have an easier time with the smallest piece on top. <laughs> Gonna match up those raw edges. Get it started and then match it up as we go down. And that's it. That's all of our strips sewn together. Just like that. Isn't that pretty? That would make a pretty face mask, wouldn't it? Let's see. Putting that. There we go. Hello, everybody. Just come on in. So here's our piece. And I'm going to warm up my iron because she's been sleeping. And I'm gonna give that a second to warm up. Ooh, Christina said, starch is your friend with narrow pieces. Absolutely. I didn't starch any of my pieces, but it would have helped a lot. <laughs> it really would have. Carmela, they're one and a half inches wide. 10 inches long. Now, some of y'all 
want to press all of these seams open. And if that's you and that's what you want to do, by all means, you should do that. I'm going to press all my seams over to the same exact side. <laughs> Now, if you press all your seams open, I feel like this piece will be flatter in the end, right? It will be. But, uh, so this one, I pressed all my seams over to the side and I stitched in the ditch. And uh, yeah, I don't mind that at all. So I'm pressing all my seams over to one side. When we do that, all right, look at this. It's like an accordion, right? I'm going to hold on to this one piece. See how far I can pull that out? See that? When I press it, I want to pull it out a little bit, but not overly stretch it. Right? See that give? I want to pull on it a little bit, but not make it wonky or pull it too, too, too tight out. Right? Can y'all see that? So I'm just going to start right here in the middle. And I'm just giving a little bit of pull, just a little bit, just like that. And I'm pressing all my seams in one direction. And I get them started by pressing from the back side. But then I flip it over and I really press it and I even give it a little bit of steam sometimes. Just a little bit. And it lays down pretty flat. Ooh, wouldn't this make a pretty face mask? I should go scan that real quick. <laughs> Vicky, my sewing machine is a Juki HZL F600. Let me just jump out of the chat for a second because sometimes my chat freezes up. And I want to make sure that I'm seeing everything. And just remember, if you have questions specific for me, if you type them in all caps, it makes it easy for me to uh, to see them. Isn't that pretty? So now, your strip set should be the same size as the top of the fabric, right? Two rectangles, just like that. Just like that. <laughs> Sheila said, we can chat while you scan. Uh, I'm scared I will mess up my computer because when I scan, it sends it over to my computer. And I have my live stream set up, so I don't want to lose y'all. I'll make another one because you know what? I'm doing more of these. So, But yeah, it's just so pretty. That would be such, such a pretty face mask. Now, the half square, half rectangle triangle is a little tricky the first time i did it i totally messed it up i sewed all my strips together they were this pretty i did what i thought was i was supposed to do and it did not turn out and i had cut it and everything so i had to start all over again there's a little trick to it i want you to take your strip set and set it off to the side for a second now we're working with this solid fabric, right? And this is six and a half inches by 10 inches. We're gonna draw a line from corner to corner. But I want you to go from the bottom left corner down here to the top right corner. That's the direction we're gonna be drawing that line. Make it easy. I got to turn it like this. 
I've got my big ruler out today. We're going to draw a line from corner to corner. Just like this. Just like that. And now we're going to measure over a quarter of an inch on both sides, right? And make another line. So, there's my first sewing line. Just like a half square triangle, right? Just like that, except we're working with a rectangle. And here's my second sewing line. So that middle line should be the line that's exactly lined up to your corners, right? That's where we're eventually going to cut this apart, but not yet. We're going to bring back our strip set. Now I can move this out of the way. <laughs> Here's our strip set. Here's the top of our mug rug. Right, and we're making these marks on the back side of your fabric, not the pretty side. The pretty side is going to go down onto our strip set. So here are our two pieces, and this is where I messed up the first couple times I made this. Instead of lining them up like this and pinning, we are rotating so that it's skewed just like this, right? You can put it on top and then you're doing a little turn like this. And now you are pinning your pieces so they don't move. Celeste, I could do a photo on those masks very easily. Yep, photos do wonderful with the sublimation. If you are uh, able to do sublimation, I'm going to be putting a link to those masks after we're done in the comment section. If you don't have a printer set up for sublimation, you can, uh, and you want me to to print it and make it for you? I could do that. Send me a message on Facebook or on Etsy. I would just need the photo that you want done and you could even add words and stuff. Wow, I'm just pinning like crazy. There, that's not gonna move. <laughs> you really don't need that many pins. Amy said, I wish you would make some and put in your shop. I might do that, Amy. That would be really cool. I could even put your name and stuff on it. That would be awesome. All right, so we're going to bring this. Vicki Jackson. Oh, I think, Sherry, that I got her... Uh, I answered her question, I think. Can you explain what sublimate is? Yes. Uh, so sublimation ink is different than your normal inkjet printer or even your laser printers, right? Laser printers use like a uh, polyester powder. I think that's right. And uh, inkjet printers, they use uh, sometimes pigmented, sometimes dye-based inks, right? Uh, sublimation ink, when you heat set, it actually turns to a gas and it dyes your substrate, like your t-shirt, your hat, your face mask, your all kinds of stuff. Uh, so it turns from an ink to a gas when heated and actually goes into the fibers and dyes it so it's permanent. The only downside is it needs to be like man-made materials for the best results, so like polyester. You can do 
polyester cotton blends, but the higher polyester count, the more bright and vibrant your print is going to be. And uh, the more cotton in your t-shirt or your fabric, the more vintage and faded it's going to look after washing. Okay, we're bringing this over to the sewing machine. We're not sewing that very middle line. That's gonna be our cutting line, just like a half square triangle. We're sewing on the two lines on either side, right? We're sewing those two lines. And that's the trick for the half rectangle triangle. Turning it just a smidgen and lining up the opposite corners. I was not doing that. And then I was wondering why it would never work. <laughs> and then I figured it out. You have to turn it. All right, so I'm going to start. We're going to sew both of these lines. So there's the first one. And I'm just going to turn this over and we're going to sew back down the other way. Now, in reality, y'all, y'all are going to fly through the, this process. You know, I'm doing a lot of chatting in between the steps. And so it seems like it takes a long time to make these mug rugs, but it really doesn't. It really doesn't. I'm going to take these pins out. I am going to give this a quick press just to flatten out those two seams that I just did, right? And now we are cutting right on that middle line, the first line that we drew. We are cutting this right in half. So there's our two mug rug tops, y'all. Just like that. And now we're going to flip this over and press it. There's the first mug rug top. Isn't she pretty? And here's the second mug rug top. Now that is pretty efficient, <laughs> right? I kind of love that. Hello, Sally. Thank you so much for answering that question. So there is the two tops for our mug rug. Now to finish these off, you're going to need a, two batting pieces, right? And I've already pre-cut my stuff here. Two batting pieces. And those are going, I cut them a little bit bigger, y'all. Okay. Because I'm not doing a binding on these. We're going to make them super easy and do no binding on these. So I did make the batting a little bit bigger. The batting is uh, 10 by 6 and a half. Now if you want to put a binding on these, you can just trim 
right to the size, the true size of your mug rug, right? Just trim the extra off. The backing fabric is also 10 by six and a half. I'm gonna take my backing and lay it right on top of everything. So I have my mug rug top facing up, my batting underneath. I'm gonna take my backing fabric and lay pretty side facing down right over top of everything. Now, you know what? I wanna be able to see this. So let's do this. Back up and reverse it. Batting, backing, now your backing will be pretty side facing up, right? And now let's put our mug rug top down with the pretty side. There we go. Let's do it again. Batting, backing, pretty side facing up. Mug rug, pretty side facing down. And what I'm gonna do is pin these in place, just a couple pins, and we're going to sew all the way around. And I'm gonna use a quarter inch seam allowance. You can use less than that if you want. No matter what seam allowance you do, you wanna make sure you leave an opening so you can turn these right side out. Finishing them this way also helps keep them super quick, right? Doing a self-binding is pretty fast. This is even faster, <laughs> and it's still really cute. All right, so we're gonna go back to the sewing machine again. And I'm just gonna whiz right through and do a seam all the way around Remembering to leave an opening to turn it right side out. You'll also want to do a back stitch when you start and stop to lock those stitches in place. So just like that. I just sew off the edge because that's faster for me. <laughs> and I'm following the edge of the mug rug top, not the edge of the back, right? Like that. And we're coming down the side where we started. Remember to leave that opening. I like to leave a pretty good size opening. Back stitch. And we're done with that one. I am going to bring in this other one and do the same exact thing. Making sure those little seams stay laying down the right way. <laughs> I 
Here's our third side. And the side we started on. And backstitch, leave an opening. See how fast that goes? And take these pins out. Debbie said, what did I miss? The whole thing? <laughs> uh, about three quarters of the whole thing. Miss Debbie, you'll have to come back and watch it on the replay to catch up to where we are now. But don't go. Stick around and hang out with us. All right, I'm going to take my ruler one more time, and I'm going to trim away the extra that goes beyond my seam allowances, right? Because I don't want all that bulkiness on the inside. So I'm just leaving. Oh, is that like an eighth of an inch? Maybe a generous eighth of an inch beyond that stitch line? We'll call it a generous eighth. <laughs> I'm not measuring it. I'm just eyeballing it. And then on the side where my opening is, I like having a little bit more fabric to tuck in that opening. That just helps me. So I'm going to just carefully trim like that where the opening is and then come in here and trim you can do this with scissors if you want see that extra that helps me get a neater tuck inside that opening it's just something i like to do because i struggle trying to make my openings nice and neat <laughs> We're going to trim the second one like that. Careful not to cut into your stitch line. And I know it's hard to see because my thread really blends in with this fabric, right? But there's the opening. Again, you could do it with scissors if you have more control, right? And now we're just flipping right side out. Cindy said, guess what I, guess I know what I'll be making today. <laughs> are you making this mug rug or are you making something else? Maybe you're making the face mask. With this bigger opening, y'all, it's not that much of a struggle to turn right side out. I do have my handy dandy turner thingies that Sally sent me, but this is a pretty big opening. My fingers fit in there really well. We're just going to flatten it out and pokey out those corners. Isn't that cute? That's so cute. Poke, poke, poke. Poke, poke. Poke. And poke. Poke. There we go. We're going to turn that opening right inside there, like that, like that, <laughs> and we're going to give this a press. It's 
Oh, that's a pretty little opening tucked in there. I get excited about the little things, right? <laughs> We're just going to press that. Look how neat that is, right? Eh, it's not horrible. And I'm going to flip this one out too. So we're going to have two completed mug rugs at the end of today's video. You can, of course, uh, hand stitch your little opening closed if you want to do that. I'm going to bring mine over to the sewing machine and just do a straight stitch close to the edge all the way around because that is so much faster for me. And I think it looks kind of cute like that. Oh, the clouds are moving in. I guess it is going to thunderstorm today. I guess it is. All right, let me go in and just pokey those corners. Poke. <laughs> Poke. It works better if you say if you say that. Poke. 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 Oh, Sally. Now I see your comment. She said press the seams down first before you turn it. Oh. Okay, I'm gonna try to remember that for the next ones I make. <laughs> I wish I would have seen that just like two seconds ago. Oh, yep, there's the rain. Just like that, y'all. It was sunny and now it's raining. All right, now to save time, I'm only going to bring one of these over. And stitch it down so that you can see many of y'all, y'all know what to do, right? You know what to do. I'm going to, whoops, I'm going to do a straight stitch, but I'm going to increase the stitch length to like a 2.8 on my machine, a little bit longer. Because we're sewing through some seams, you know, there's several thicknesses right next to that seam. I'm going to make my stitch length a little bit longer. And I'm going in really close to the edge. Going around the corners like that. Now we're catching that opening and sewing that closed. Now y'all notice I didn't do a back stitch when I started. Here's where I started. I'm just going to sew beyond where I started and that gives me a cleaner finish. Sewing beyond where I started, right in that stitch line. And now if you want to do a couple back stitches, I really feel like you get a lot less bulk in those stitches. See that? While we're here, we can do any quilting we want. For this one, I'm going to keep it really simple. I'm just going to stitch right along that diagonal line. You could get crazy and free motion quilt it all up. The other ones, I did a stitch in the ditch between all of the strips, and that is super cute. 
But to save time in today's video, I'm just going to stitch right along this diagonal. Just like that. Isn't she so pretty? Now before we close, for today. Oh, y'all are so welcome. Barbara, let me write that down. I have to go links, link shopping after the live. Rotary blades that I use. All right, I'll put that in the comment with the face mask link pinned in the comment section when we're done with the live. All right, we're just going to pretend that this one is stitched, right? I'm not going to take the time because you get the idea, right? I'll do that after the live. So the free pattern comes with the heart template. You could use freezer paper. You could use heat and bond, you could use the wonder under, whatever your favorite fusible is. You could use that. Mine happens to be heat and bond light. I'm gonna go ahead and trace this really quickly. We're tracing right on the line. Like this. Of course, you could put any applique design in this space, couldn't you? You could get really creative with it. I use my old scissors to cut this out. We're not cutting it out on a line yet. We're just separating it from the bulk of the heat and bond. Like that. I'm going to cut some of that extra off, too. I'm going to bring my heart fabric over. Pretty side facing down. We're going to fuse this to the back side of your applique fabric. Ooh, is anybody else buffering or is it me? I have a green light, so I'm hoping it's okay on my end. <laughs> you never know. We do have a thunderstorm coming through. Thank y'all so much. Oh, Dari, one of your strips was shorter than the rest. What, if you don't want to throw it away, here's what you do. You make them all, you just cut an inch off the 10 inch ones and you make your mug rug a little bit smaller. You're going to do the same technique, the same process. Your strip set will just be smaller, right? which means your, this fabric will need to be resized. Sew your strips together. It'll be one and a half inch strips by nine inch strips. Sew them together and press them and then lay them onto this fabric and trim this fabric to the size that you're working with now and follow all the same steps. Don't throw that strip set in the trash. Your mug rug will just be a different size. That's all. <laughs> right? Yay! Okay. My internet seems to be good. So the heart, we're just going to fuse right on here. Now you can do it like this, right? Or you could do it like this and part of your heart overlaps. 
like that. That's kind of cute. You could do it like this. I kind of like that. Let's go with that. Uh, no, I kind of like this. <laughs> I'm going to fuse that right in place. So now we just have to stitch that down, right? But part of the design bundle, right? Not design bundle. That's the website I like to go to. Part of this mug rug bundle, you get uh, the like the country looking star. Isn't that cute? You could do that. You also get these two sayings like that, that you can cut out a heat transfer vinyl or fabric with your cutting machine. And if you don't have a cutting machine, before you layer your project, you could trace this onto a lighter fabric with a fabric marker, right? You could do that if you don't have a cutting machine. I went ahead and cut out an extra Bless this home out of heat transfer vinyl. And we're just going to put that one right on this one. And what's really cool about that is we don't have to stitch this down once it's fused on there. <laughs> Not like with fabric and heat and bond light. You have to stat you have to stitch all that stuff down, but the heat transfer vinyl. It's on there. <laughs> Our cracker box. Yes. Well, you know what? I use these mug rugs for lots of stuff. I use them as little snack mats instead of using lots and lots of paper towels. I use them as a mouse pads. And you can change them out a lot, you know. Uh, I hang them up on a wall as decorations. And I also use them for my mugs and little snacks and stuff, too. Now, I didn't time that. Let's see if it comes off. Yep. It's mostly coming off. There we go. Let me just press it one more time. I guess I should have been paying attention and counting or something. <laughs> so there's that. Isn't that so cute? I love it. So of course now, you know, I still need to stitch around the outside, closing that opening. And uh, maybe do some quilting, stitch in the ditch maybe between the strip sets and down the middle maybe. So that needs to be finished up. And uh, let's go ahead and do a blanket stitch on this heart. Why not? Let's do that. I'm going to switch to my open toe foot so maybe you can see a little bit easier. I'm going to choose a blanket stitch on my machine. Let's test that out and see how big that is. Make it a little bit longer. All right, that's good. So the settings I just chose for this particular project, blanket stitch, is a 3.0 width and a 2.8 length. Of course, on your sewing machine, those same settings, it might look different. <laughs> but that's what I'm using. <clears throat> We're going to come down right next to the applique in the background fabric.
in the last couple of months, the blanket stitch has become my favorite for stitching down applique. I think it's just adorable. Of course, it's not as quick as if you just put on a free motion foot <laughs> and stitch it down, right? This one takes a little bit longer, but it's worth it. And I'm going kind of quick with it, so it's a little messy. You can see whenever I stop, I'm stopping with the needle in the background fabric, right? Not in the applique portion, but in the background. And then I turn. And we're coming around to where we started. And there we go. Isn't that so cute? I'm showing you here because I really feel like you can see it much better than when I go to the cutting mat. Isn't that so cute? All right. There we go. There's the heart one. Y'all, that's the free pattern. Make sure before you go that you grab that. Make sure you grab that. And then, of course, there is the bundle if you want the other designs. But make sure you grab the free one at least before you go. Or come back and then print it off. What is the transfer paper you were using and do you need a machine? Uh, this was Casa Heat Transfer Vinyl. That's what I used for the letters for these particular mug rugs. Of course, there's all different kinds of brands of heat transfer vinyl, but this is a CASA, K-A-S-S-A. -S -S you can find that on Amazon, and I used my brother's scan and cut to cut out the letters. And uh, as part of this bundle, you could use your Cricut, uh, you could use your Silhouette, and all kinds of cutting machines. Or you could just trace this with a fabric marker, right? If you don't have a cutting machine and you want to add those words on there, fabric markers to the rescue. The finished size of the mug rug. Let's see. I'm going to do this orientation first, right? Because we're looking at it like this. One, two, three, four, five and a quarter inches wide. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine inches tall. You could do it in this orientation. So then it's nine inches wide and five and a quarter inches tall. So two different orientations, whichever one you want to do. Isn't that cool? I still need to stitch this one down.
Ooh, Teresa uh, said her son is moving down here in July and he has a cricket. Can't wait to use it. Oh, you can do so much with it. I know you're excited. I know you're excited. Are you using parchment paper to protect your iron? Dari, I'm using, um, sorry, I'm scrolling up to see stuff that I've missed now. This is a Teflon sheet. Uh, and you can order those. You can get these in the store too. Uh, but a lot of your heat transfer vinyl comes with a Teflon sheet. So just start saving them. Uh, and I'll even cut them because I have like 10 of them now. Um, I cut them to different sizes because it's e it comes in a great big long sheet and this is easier for me to work with, right? But this is a Teflon sheet. You could use parchment paper though. Absolute. Parchment, parchment paper, butcher paper, don't use freezer paper. Jill's got to go back to work. <laughs> Vicki said, uh, she keeps telling herself she'll get more done if she has one. She's got to justify the expense. Yes. You know, these cutting machines, actually, they've come down a lot since uh they first came out they really have but they're still quite a purchase right let me just tell you some of the stuff i do with mine y'all i have a i have a brother scan and cut cm 350 i don't even think they make that version anymore they have the newer ones right but it does the same stuff as your crickets and your silhouettes all of them right uh, so cutting heat transfer vinyl. Y'all, I love putting words on my stuff. If you haven't noticed that, <laughs> take a look through a lot of my videos. I put words on mug rugs and quilts and stuff like that. Well, when you're doing a smaller little mug rug, that means your words are smaller. You could take the SVG that's in this bundle and cut this out of fabric with heat and bond on the back of it, right? And do this out of fabric if you wanted to. Use the heat and bond in the red package. You don't have to stitch it down. If you use heat and bond light, which is my favorite, then that would mean that you had to stitch all this down, which if you enjoy doing that, <laughs> then that would give you some great time at your sewing machine, right? But you could cut that out of fabric. You could also cut that out of cardstock and make a card out of it. Yep, you could take that SVG and make a greeting card. You could make it bigger and make a sign for your room. You could do all kinds of stuff. Yeah, you could do all kinds of stuff. I really like this. But yep, look how... Okay, so I say look how quick. How long have we been streaming, y'all? It's one fifteen, an hour and 15 minutes. It does not take an hour and 15 minutes to make these two mug rugs. I've done a lot of talking and even talking about other stuff, right? If you sit down, maybe your first two will take the longest. Your next two, you're going to breeze right through them. No binding makes it even faster, but two mug rugs from six strips and one piece of fabric. I kind of really like that. Do y'all hear the thunder? Nancy, yes, this is this is heat transfer vinyl. 
which really speeds up the whole thing too, right? Because we don't have to stitch that down. But I could have cut that out of fabric if I wanted to. Heat transfer vinyl, so fast and easy. Ooh, thank you, Gail. I've got some burnt stuff on the bottom of my iron that needs to come off. <laughs> Thunder. I'm uh I'm in Virginia. Williamsburg, Virginia. That's so crazy. Barbara is a, is west of me, still in Virginia, but west of me. And uh, it's sunny and breezy and 52. It was in the 70s a little while ago. And we're getting ready to have thunderstorms. And Sally is getting more snow. That's so crazy. Yeah, Teresa said, I have so many one and a half inch strips, I can make a lot of these. Yes, that's why I save all my stuff, right? When you're cutting for your blocks and you get strips of fabric, just save all that stuff. Because look at some of the beautiful things you can make with them, right? These are actually strips. Let me show you my stack. So, uh... My camping trip, which I have done zero hexes in 21 days. But I have a box of English paper piece and hexes that I'm supposed to be working on when we're camping. And I pre-cut all, it's all pre-cut, you know, in a box. These are the strips from where I pre-cut all of those pieces. Look how beautiful that is. Doesn't that look so pretty? <laughs> This has been sitting over patiently waiting for projects. So this is where I got my strips from for the mug rugs. And don't they make pretty little mug rugs? Yeah, I save all my strips. I save all my scraps. Well, I'm an applique person anyway. I love applique. So I save most of my scraps anyway, but... All right, so before we go, if, if you haven't been down in the description box, there's two files, right? This one's the free one, and you get the heart template. All right, it's a two-page PDF. The one right below it, that's the bundle. That's going to bring you over to Etsy, and that's the one where you get, you know, the country-looking star, the bless this home, and the faith over fear. Those and, you know, you get the heart at the same time, but you get the three extra ones and you get a separate SVG file. So there's actually two files. If you get the bundle, you get the PDF and you get the cutting file. OK. No matter what, I want you to go get the heart one. All right. It's in the description box right below the title of this video. I hope you make tons and tons of these. I hope you share pictures of them. I would love to see your pictures. All the links to do that in Creative Crew are down in the description box. If you don't do Facebook, but you want to send me pictures, you can go over to my Etsy shop and send me a message. And you can attach pictures that way. And so you can show me your pictures that way too. And uh, don't forget, those of you who are on Patreon, I can't wait to hang out with you Saturday. Wait till y'all see all the stuff that I bought one year at a craft sh at a quilt show that I never, ever even used. I've used them one time. Most of the ones that I bought, I haven't even opened the package on them. That's what I'm showing for my show and tell.
Kathy said, where do we get the free pattern? Miss Kathy, you're going to need to open the description box. Okay, so if you're on a cell phone, let me show you where it is on a cell phone before we go. If you're on a cell phone, you need to close the live chat, right? And when you do, uh, there's the name of the video. See that little arrow right there? It's really small. They should make that thing bigger. If you click on that, there's the description box. It pops open. There's two links, the free one and then the bundle. And then all the ways to get in touch with me. All the links that you can click on are blue. This might also work if you're using an iPad or a tablet or something. You might see the little arrow that you click on. And then if you're on a computer, if you're on the computer, you're going to look underneath the title of the video and you'll see in all caps, I think, it says see more. And you click on that and it opens up the description box on the computer. But it doesn't work if you're on in the live chat. You got to leave the live chat to do it. Sheila said, the words are cute, but there's no way I'm tracing and cutting by hand. Yeah, I totally get it. I get it. I would trace it with a fabric marker. I would trace this with a fabric marker directly onto my mug rug top. But I would not trace it and cut it out by hand out of fabric. I would never be able to do that. Not by hand. You know, some people love fussy cutting. So they'd be all over that, but that's not me. <laughs> And uh, if I cut this out of fabric, it would be with my cutting machine. But if you didn't have a cutting machine and you still wanted to do the words, I would just trace it with a fabric marker. And then you don't have to stitch it down or cut it out, right? Dun, 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 dun. All right, I want to make sure everybody's straight before we go. Did everybody find the description box? Ooh, fabric paint, Teresa. Yes. Now you're speaking my lung, my love language. Because I'm all about painting on some fabric. I love painting on fabric. Y'all, you know what? There's so many creative minds. Where there's a will, there's a way, right? And so uh, there's probably all kinds of different ways you could do letters and words on your mug rugs. All right, Linda got it open. Very good. All right, good. Okay, y'all, I'm going to go ahead and turn off this computer and get my sewing machine unplugged <laughs> uh, before any more of this thunderstorm comes through. Sally, if you are still around and you want to Zoom, I can Zoom from my phone. But I'm here at the house, so um, yeah, send me a message on the Facebook if you still want to do that. If not, we can Zoom this evening. It's up to you if you have some free time. All right, everybody. Thanks for hanging out with me today. I hope you had fun. And if nothing else, I hope that uh, it's inspired you to make projects like this. And then you can see how, how quickly the half rectangle triangle makes two projects in the same time as one. All right, everybody, I hope you have a fantastic rest of your week, and I'll see y'all next week. Bye.